536 now. This week is Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week, where people across the country come together to bring attention to these problems, and thousands of our neighbors face them every day. So we wanted to give you an inside look at an organization that has been doing amazing work for decades. Our Jess Arnold is live at Miriam's Kitchen. That's in Northwest D.C. And Jess, I know the Capital Area Food Bank also shared some new data just a few months ago about hunger in the area. Um, some startling stats out of this report. Good morning. Good morning, Annie. Yeah, you're right. I took a look. This report is just from September, and it says that more than 1.2 million people in the region are facing food insecurity. That's one in three of our neighbors. Since this is Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week, I also took a look at D.C.'s point-in-time homelessness count, which is just from this January, and it says close to 5,000 people in D.C. alone were experiencing homelessness. So this is a huge problem we're seeing in the area, but Miriam's Kitchen is working to help. That's where we are this morning. You can see their menu here for the day, and then very soon behind me, this is going to be full with people working. They're already getting ready for the breakfast here. And right over here, I want to bring in the CEO, Scott Shankelberg, to talk a little bit more about what you're doing. Good morning. And I know this goes far beyond meals, what you do here at Miriam's Kitchen. Absolutely. Well, thank you for the opportunity. So Miriam's Kitchen has been around for four decades, and we've been working to end chronic homelessness across that time. We started out with meals. We still, meals are an incredibly important part of our program. And over the time, we know that both Food insecurity and housing insecurity are solvable issues in our community. Um, unfortunately, across the last six months, we've seen as much as a 30% increase in the number of people coming for meals. So clearly, there's a need in the community that we as a, that we need to address. And these are again solvable issues. We know how to solve food insecurity. People need food. We can help people with food. We know how to solve homelessness. People need housing. We can provide housing for people. And Miriam's Kitchen's work is to help the community understand those issues and bring people in so that they can help support our work to address the food insecurity and the housing insecurity. And it's really amazing because the connection point is when you're serving breakfast and dinner here and then you offer a range of social services. Talk to me a little bit more if you could quickly about your housing program to try Absolutely. to get people into permanent placement. So Miriam's Kitchen works and has you know done both an on an advocacy level you know kind of to try and work to increase the amount of affordable housing. But to get into housing, it's not an easy process. I mean, for anyone who's even gone out as a renter on their own or bought their own home, it's a co it can be a complicated process. It's even more complicated for those experiencing homelessness. So our case managers, our social workers work with the individuals to do all the necessary steps documentation, getting to appointments, filling out many, many different types of paperwork, and accompanying through, that, through a really complicated process. So you have to have an expertise around that. Well, thanks for sharing a little bit about that, but you're going to be with us again in just about an hour. We're, we'll talk even more about solutions and the incredible work that everyone's doing here at Miriam's Kitchen, but I'll send it back to you in studio. Jess, thanks for that. Um, and I also want to share a takeaway from that 2023 hunger report done by the Capital Area Food Bank. When we talk about food insecurity, we often think it mostly affects people who are out of work or don't have a lot of money, but food insecurity is not concentrated under the poverty line. In fact, if you take a look at some of this, um, these facts 67 percent of food insecure households in our area they earn more than the federal poverty line and the study also showed that even among households making at least one hundred and twenty thousand dollars which is the uh, median income in our area food insecurity is affecting one in five families so really think about that and if you want to help make a difference visit the capital area food bank website it is capital you can also find that link on my facebook page five